Well, the United States has conducted airstrikes on the Iran-backed Kitayb Hezbollah group in Iraq and Syria, and around 25 Hezbollah fighters are said to have been neutralized. The Pentagon announced that they carried out strikes on five locations, two in Syria and three in Iraq. The targets included the command centers and weapon storage facilities of the Hezbollah group. Places from where Hezbollah has been planning recent attacks, as many as 55 others are also said to have been wounded in the airstrike. U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper said the operation was successful and that all the drones and the pilots returned safely back to the base. He also said that the U.S. was contemplating additional action against the Iran-backed group. Uh, the uh, strikes were successful. The pilots and, and aircraft returned back to base safely. I would add that in our discussion today with the President, we discussed with him other options that are available. And I would note also that we will take additional actions as necessary to ensure that we act in our own self-defense and we deter further bad behavior from militia groups or from Iran. Well, among the five targets was Hezbollah's headquarters in the Kame district on the Syrian border. At least four local Hezbollah commanders have been killed in the operation. This represents a fresh escalation between Iran and the United States. Secretary of State Mike Pompe said that Americans were being attacked by Iranian proxies for a long time now. He said that the United States would not stand by and let Iran attack innocent American citizens. The attack that took place at an, against an Iraqi facility threatened uh, American forces. This has been going on now for uh, weeks and weeks and weeks. This wasn't the first set of attacks against this particular Iraqi facility and others where there are American lives at risk. And today, uh, what we did was take a decisive response that makes clear what President Trump has said for uh, months and months and months, which is that we will not stand for the Islamic Republic of Iran to take actions that put American men and women in jeopardy. Well, the U.S. forces are in Iraq as part of an international coalition against the Islamic State fighters. The immediate trigger for this airstrike was the rocket attack on a military base in Kirkuk. A barrage of 30 rockets hit the city, killing one American civilian contractor and injuring four servicemen. Mike Pompey had blamed the Iran-backed Hezbollah for the attack on Kirkuk and vowed a decisive U.S. response. And well, we are less than a day away from Kim Jong-un's year-end deadline for the United States. And with both sides remaining adamant on their positions, a last-minute miracle seems all but impossible. Well, Kim Jong-un chaired a special session of his Workers' Party on Sunday. It was the largest plenary session of the party since they convened under Kim Jong-un for the first time in 2013. He touched upon foreign affairs, weapons industry and the armed forces. With a call for offensive and positive measures to protect North Korea's sovereignty, the other issue on the agenda was the economy. U.S. sanctions have crippled the North Korean economy and, no, and so Kim has called for the urgent changes in the industrial sector. The United States, meanwhile, has threatened North Korea with more sanctions. Since 2017, Pyongyang has suspended its long-range missile program. But there are indications that Kim's so-called Christmas gift could be an intercontinental ballistic missile test. United States National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien has said that such a test would attract more sanctions. But China and Russia don't seem to be on the same page as the United States. The UN Security Council is scheduled to meet later today for discussions on a proposal by Russia and China to lift sanctions placed on North Korea. These specific sanctions were imposed in 2016 and 2015 to cut off funding for North Korea's nuclear program. But there is very little international...